ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Jed Webster and his younger brother, Tex, inherited an extensive, well-stocked ranch when their father died. But in less than three years, the brothers quickly ran through most of the inheritance. They were scorned by their neighbors as unworthy of respect and found themselves deeply involved in debt. Finally, on order from the court, Tex and Jed were forced to sell either the land and buildings or the last 500 head of cattle. Well, Tex, at least we're square with the world. Yeah, we sure made a mess of things. Maybe we should have sold the cattle and kept the land and house. We couldn't have held on to it. No cattle, we couldn't have paid the taxes. Uh, now we have the cattle and no way to feed it. But ever hear of the Rainbow Hills? Rainbow Hills? Of course I have Long way northwest of here. What about it? There's some of the finest grazing land in all of Texas up there. Plenty of water, grass waist high. Now, hold on, Jed. You know the Rainbow Hills are in Indian country and protected by treaty. If we try to run our hood in there, we'd mix with plenty of trouble. I know about the treaty. It says the Indians are to have the Rainbow Hills so long as they keep the peace. If they break the peace or go on the warpath for any reason, Rainbow Hills will be thrown open for grazing. Ah, the Indians won't break the peace. Chief White Fox will see to that. I think I know how to make them break the treaty. There's a town called Smokyville a few miles off the reservation. Tomorrow, we'll round up a trail crew and start pushing our herd in that direction. It was about a month later that the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend Tonto topped the crest of a low ridge that overlooked the parched and sun-baked valley of Smoke Creek. Below, they saw a herd of cattle grazing on the sparse grass along the banks of the shallow little stream. The masked man signaled a halt. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hello, Steady. I wonder where that herd is headed, Tonto. Oh, maybe it belonged to a rancher who owned land here. I doubt it. This land couldn't support a herd, even a small one. Oh, that right. Not much grass grow here. That herd's on the move. Beside the chuck wagon, there are two supply wagons. Maybe rancher drive herd to Smokyville. Sell herd there. Smokyville isn't a cattle market. It's a timber town. I think I'll question the trail boss. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. At the trail camp, Jed Webster and his brother Tex were giving final instructions to their top hand before riding into town. Hey, Jed, look. Mm -hmm. A couple of hombres riding in here. Yeah, one's an engine. The other's wearing a mask. Now let me do the talking. You'll be ready for trouble if they start anything. Go right out, Hoosh. What do you want? I only want to ask a question. Then ask it and get out of here. Where are you driving this herd? Now, don't discuss my business with mask critters and redskins. Very well. But let me warn you, Jed. But... Stay clear of the Rainbow Hills. 
That's Indian country. And it's protected by government treaty. Hey, how'd you know my name? You're Jed Webster from Pecos County, aren't you? You didn't answer my question. How'd you know my name? By the brand on the cattle, and also by that watch chain swinging across your vest. The watch chain? It was your father's, wasn't it? Yes, but... Your father was more or less famous for the watch chain that held a row of nuggets of pure gold. As a matter of fact, because of that chain, many people call him Nuggets Webster. I'd heard that you inherited the chain with its row of gold nuggets when your father died. You seem to know a lot, don't you? Well, I make it my business to know things. Well, let me tell you, mister. Keep your nose out of my business. The herd is California bound. And if you have ideas or raiding it, you'd better forget them. Now, clear out of here. All right, let's go, Tonto. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Hey, what do you make of him, Jed? Can't figure it, Tex. He seems to know plenty about us, but I never saw him before. No, neither did I, but... But what? There's something familiar about him. As far as I'm concerned, he's an owl hoot, looking for information that doesn't concern him. Joe, while Tex and I are in town, keep an eye out for him. Tell the other boys to do the same. Shoot him down if he comes back. I sure will, Jed. Let's go, Tex. That's right. <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's get go. it. Get it. You think him tell truth? I don't know, Toto. We'll find out. We watch him? Yes. But first, we'll ride over to that woods, make camp, and fix a meal. Then you'll have to go into town for supplies. Town of Smoky Bill? That's right. And uh, while you're in town, you might see if there's a letter from Dan Reed. It'll be addressed to you as usual. Ah, uh, me no. Get back by sundown if possible. Then we'll find a place where we can watch the Webster herd and make sure Jed told the truth. We'll see if he's driving it to California. Ah. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. The town of Smokyville was in timber country, and many of the people were supported by work in the sawmill. The mill had shut down that day, and many timber cutters were out of work. A number of them had gone to the Lone Pine Cafe to discuss their troubles with the bartender. Well, the layoff is going to hit the town mighty hard. I reckon you boys will be moving on to another camp now, huh? We'll have to. No money to be made around here. Yeah, this town's going to be dead in a doornail now the mill's closed down. Okay, yeah. gents. Let a thirsty man to the bar if you don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> Come on, Tex. Yeah, Howdy, sure. gents. What'll it be? Refreshments for the house. <laughs> Step up to the bar, folks. Refreshments are free. Yeah. Aren't you the same two fellas who came through here by a week ago? Ah, sure. <laughs> we thought you'd remember us. I do. And as I recall, you didn't have ten dollars between you. Now you're ordering refreshments for the house. Right you are, barkeep. The wheel of fortune spins rapidly, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not popping a cork until I see the color of your money. Well, we're gonna get it. Uh, you hear that, folks? He wants to see the color of our money. <laughs> Very well, he shall see it. <laughs> Take a look at that. Hey, it's yellow, golden yellow. That's the color of our money. <laughs> Gold nugget. Big as a buzzard's eye. Yeah, and there's more where that came from. Now, mister, do you serve us or don't you? All right. Name your poison, Jim. During the half hour that followed, the unemployed lumberjacks accepted without question the unexpected hospitality of the two Webster brothers. Then, convinced that his plan was working, Jed Webster said, All right, Lockheed, how much do we owe you? Thirty dollars, over and above the one gold nugget. <laughs> Very well. Here's another nugget. I'll uh, wait up and give you a change in cash. Oh, never mind the change. Let my friends here drink up the change. Hey, hey. Well, my friends, we must leave you now. Come on, Tex. Well, hey, mister, just where'd you get that <laughs> You know, my old father used to say, never look a gift horse in the mouth, my friend. Isn't it enough that you enjoy the fruits of our work and luck? <laughs> Come on, Tex. Come on. Now we'll go to the hotel room and wait developments. The gold rush hasn't started in 30 minutes, I miss my guess. Hey, when you started buying drinks, the news spread fast. <laughs> Just look at this street. Completely deserted. Uh, no, it's not. Huh? Look yonder beside our horses. Hey, a redskin. The same redskin that was with the masquerader. What's he up to? He's looking over our horses. Must have recognized him by the brains. Uh-oh, he sees us. Hey, just a minute, redskin. I want to talk to you. Oh? What about? Why are you prowling around our horses? Me not bother your horses. Me have horse. There. See? That's a horse he was riding, Jed. It my horse, all right. Yeah, but you were looking at ours. I want to know what you and your masked friend are up to. Oh. Start walking. Why are you draw a gun on me? Hey, what's the idea, Jed? I'm taking him up the back stairs to our room. I'll sweat the truth out of him. 
Now get going, Injun. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now, to continue. When Tonto drew rein at the hitch rail in front of the hotel, his horse was alongside the horses of Jed and Tex Webster. The Webster brothers immediately accused Tonto of spying on their activities and marched him at gunpoint up the back stairs to their hotel room. Take his gun, Tex. His knife, too. Yeah, right. I put him down a chair and see what's sticking in his belt. He looks like a letter. You'll not take that. Let go of you. That got him. Nerve of them, trying to get rough. Jed, you, you hit him mighty hard. No, he's just stunned. He'll be all right. Yeah, but he can't give us any information while he's unconscious. Yeah, well, maybe we'll learn something from the letter. Let's see it. It's addressed to Tano, in care of the Smokyville postmaster. Yeah. Hold it closer to the lane. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's see now. Dear Tonto, I'll meet you and the Lone Ranger in Tall Pine next Friday. Jed, the Lone Ranger. Great Scott, it's all clear now. I knew there was something familiar about that engine's name. I remember now. I've heard stories about Tonto and the Lone Ranger. That masked man we saw with Tonto. He was the Lone Ranger. And something else. I've heard stories about a kid named Dan who sometimes rides with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Yeah, so have I. Oh, Tex, Tex, I don't like this. Hey, what's uh, all that yelling? Hey, you should know, Tex. We started it. It's the gold rush getting underway. Gosh, it didn't take long. We'd better hurry with Tonto and get out of town. The Webster brothers hurriedly tied and gagged Tonto, then rushed from the hotel. The street was filled with men, horses, and wagons, ready to start for the Rainbow Hills. Jed and Tex were seized by a number of men. Hey, they're the men we want. Come on, you're going with it. Huh? Hey, show us where the pool is. Hang on to it. Oh, let me go. Let me go. You can't do this. Take your hands off me. Let go of your hands. Don't take it easy. Let me go. We're not going to hurt you. Hey. We're taking you two along with us. So tell us where you found gold. No, no. Talk. We won't jump your claims. Just show us the gold. We'll stake claims of our own. Come on, get on your horses, both of you. All right. All right, <laughs> All right boys, let's go. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. When darkness fell and Tonto did not return to camp, the Lone Ranger became concerned about his safety. He saddled the great horse Silver and rode rapidly along the trail to Smokyville. Arriving there, he rode boldly down the street when he saw that the town, to all appearances, was completely deserted, except for one horse hitched at the rack in front of the hotel. That's Tonto's horse, Scout. Those are removed. Inquire in the hotel. Easy, steady, big fellow. The aged hotel clerk was dozing in his chair behind the desk when the Lone Ranger entered. But he woke with a start when the masked man touched him on the shoulder. Uh, wake up. Hey, your mask. I'll not harm you. Now, take it easy. First a gold rush, now a mask owl hoof. Gold rush? Yep. Someone struck gold in the Rainbow Hills. The whole town's moved out. If I wasn't so old, I'd have gone too. Was there an Indian in here tonight? Hmm. Hey, yes, come to think of it, there was. Just a few minutes before the gold rush started. He came in, got a letter. You see, this is the post office as well as the hotel. Yes, I know that. His uh, horse is still hitched at the rack. Do you have any idea where he might be? No, but come to think of it, a funny thing happened just as the rush started. Oh, what was it? Well, there were two fellas named Webster registered here. Well, when the rush started, they come running through the lobby and dropped this envelope. It's the same one I gave to the Redskin just before the rush started. You see, it says Tonto. Yes, I'll take that. You say they came from their room? Yep, they did. 
I yelled at them. They dropped something, but they paid me no heed. All right. Show me to their room. The Lone Ranger followed the old clerk to a room on the second floor. Here's the Webster's room. Toto. <laughs> Holy smoke. I'll take the gag out of your mouth, Toto. It's the same agent who got the letter. What's he doing here tied and gagged? There you are, Toto. Now you can talk. Ah. Now, me glad you find me, Kimasabi. Tell me what happened while I cut these ropes. <laughs> Webster brothers see me at hitch rail. Them draw guns and bring me here. Then take Dan's letter. Me fight. Them hit me on head. We go get him now? No, Toto. We'll attend to them later. Right now, we have more important business than the Webster brothers. And what that? Someone has discovered gold in the Rainbow Hills. A rush has started. But Indians in Rainbow Hills. White man can't go there. That's the point. The Indians will fight to keep the white men off their land. And as soon as the Indians start fighting, the treaty will have been violated. We must prevent that fight. Maybe we go to Fort Madison, get soldiers. No, there isn't time. If anything is to be done, we'll have to do it alone. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had cut down much of the lead and were not far behind the townsmen when Jed and Tex made their break for freedom. Hold it, hold it. Hear that gunfire, Tonto? Ah, me hear it. Maybe Indians shoot miners. I can't believe it. The shooting's just over the ridge. It's all of two miles from the Indian reservation in the Rainbow Hills. Isn't that right? Listen, someone's riding this way. Ah, moon bright. Maybe we see them. There they are, two riders. And what we do, Kimasabi? We'll stop them. They must know something about the shooting. Hold on there! Oh, 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 we didn't know who the Redskin was when we mixed with him. When we found out he was the engine that travels with you, uh, we cleared out. If we'd known... We him... heard gunfire beyond the ridge. What did it mean? Oh, we ran into a bunch of outlaws. They, they tried to hold us up. I don't believe you. Those men are prospectors. We've been trailing them. Oh, we're telling the truth. Kimasabi, here come many riders. Oh, let us go. We didn't hurt the Indians. we got to get back to our herd. That's right, mister. You're not going anywhere. I want to know what part you played in this gold rush. We didn't have a thing to do with it. Come on! Find out what this is all about. Now get your hands up the ladder. No, don't shoot. You masked man, get your hands up. There's no need for that. I'd be a fool to reach for a gun with a dozen trained on me. You're right about that. How do I have been trailing you from Smokyville? Trailing us? What for? I think you've been fooled. What are you talking about? Where did you learn gold had been found in the Rainbow Hills? Why, from these two miners here. We didn't tell him we found gold. You showed it to us. You bought drinks for the lot of us. With nuggets as big as buzzard eyes. I thought you had a hand in this, Jed. You started a gold rush so these men would invade the Rainbow Hills and cause the Indians to fight and break the treaty. Well, he can't prove it. Don't believe him. I think I can prove it. Easy, steady, big fellow. All right, dismount, Jed. I'll not do it. I said get off. Hey. Where's your watch chain? My, my well, watch chain? Yes, here it is. Strike a match, Toto. Uh, me doing. Hey, just look at that watch chain. Uh, it's loaded with nuggets. And two of them are missing. That must be the two they spent at the bar in Smokyville. No doubt about that. These men are not miners. Then who in thunder are they? Cattlemen from Pecos County. They need open range for the cattle. They knew if the Indian Treaty could be broken, the Rainbow Hills would be thrown open for grazing. So they moved their herd up this way to Smoke Creek. It's there right now. Then they tricked you into believing they'd found gold in the Rainbow Hills. We ought to lynch them. Stop, 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 I said. Haven't you learned enough tonight not to take the law into your own hands? What do you mean by that? You almost broke an Indian treaty. You'd have had the army to deal with if you'd done so. Don't make another mistake. You'll have the law to deal with if you do. What do we do with them? I I think you've all learned a lesson, including the Websters. So far, no damage has been done. They'll be glad to clear out of the country. Yeah, we, we sure will. Take them to their herd on Smoke Creek. Head them toward California... And see if they cross the state line. We'll see to that. I'll say. All right, get mounted, Tonto. Easy, steady. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. What do you know about that masked man, Webster? And Paul always said that he was the squarest shooting man in all the West. And the toughest. I was sure right about that. That masked man's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Lone Ranger. The 
Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.